Hey, smart people, I have a three-month one-on-one personal or business coaching program. As you all know, I paid off $50,000 in debt in one year. I will teach you how I stayed out of debt using my burner method and personalized spreadsheet I created to fit my lifestyle and keep me on track. You will learn how to understand your money communication style using my financial treatment plan. Also, if you own a small business and you feel stuck with cash flow or feel disorganized, I teach business owners and self-employed entrepreneurs such as yourself to financially maximize your money, build wealth using your business income, and retire working on the business while your business continues to run, such as myself. You can book a call with me. The link is in the show notes. Six years ago, my wife took nothing but an ideal and faith and turned it into a multi-million dollar business with multiple streams of income. As a woman possessed, she overcame all obstacles and created multiple streams of wealth that has impacted our family for generations to come. From mental health professional, to therapist, to author, to CEO, she is a constant reminder of the grace of God over her life. Get ready to listen to and take notes from Stanel, the money therapist, as she schools you on money entrepreneurship, and life skills that was not taught. No more excuses. Wake up! Thank you for that fabulous introduction, husband. Welcome back to No More Excuses, Wake Up, where we talk about money, entrepreneurship, and life skills that was not taught. I am your host, Danelle Myers, also known as Danelle, the money therapist. This week, We are discussing entrepreneurship and the purpose of an employment contract and what is covered inside the contract. It is so important to discuss this topic because there are so many people that are starting off as entrepreneurs or as business owners, and this is the main piece that is needed when you start a business and you start to hire people or you have people that are contracting for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss both. Well, both of my companies, they're all employees, but in my after-school program, I have employees, which are the teachers, and then I also have contractors. The teachers that come in, they are actually teachers that work with the school. They're teachers that that are already employed with the school because I have a grant. I match their salary if they are certified teachers. Certified teachers, they have a contract. Anybody that walks in there and works for Joy Making a Difference has to have a contract. When I hire contractors that come in, these are people that are not W-2s. These are someone that's going to do a services. If someone's going to do a cooking class or I have a counselor that comes in, someone that comes and teach dance or art, anything that is not from a certified teacher has to be completely different, but it's still a contract. The way it is written up, it specifies exactly the services and what they do. And that's that's what I want to get into. Before I get into that, for a second touch, which is my case management agency, everybody is W-2s. But when I first started a second touch, a second touch was they were actually contractors. They were not W-2s. And that is a complete different podcast because then you, you're you getting into what is the difference between having a contract, having a W-2, taxes, and all those different things. But everybody is a W-2 in my case management. Everybody is a W-2 in my after-school program except those contractors. When you have contractors, it is a difference. When you have contractors, they have a business. For instance, if I come in and I go to teach self-esteem, This is a perfect example. When I first started, I started teaching self-esteem. I had my own business, my EIN number, the business was registered, but I went into schools and I taught a component that I created of self-esteem. I was teaching elementary students just basically how to assert themselves, how to communicate, 
When I got paid, the contract was written to not Stanell Myers, but to Joy Making a Difference because I had my own business. And so when you have your own business, it is a little different because now that actual contract is written to your business and it's not written to the individual. And with that, then you can go and taxes can come off because you have a legitimate business versus if you go in and you, let's say you have skills in cooking, but you don't have the cooking class in your business name. You have the cooking class in Stanell Myers. The cooking class is with Stanell Myers and I don't have it registered as Stanell the cooking queen, <laughs> for example, then the contract would just be with Stanell Myers, but that would just be that one amount that comes out that contract. It's not any type of taxes that comes out of that contract. Let me go on and go further and explain. The purpose of an employment contract, it basically contains the job description, the salary, and the terms of employment. Inside my contracts, I do not cover lateness, call-outs, insubordination, any of those things because I cover those in my policy and procedures. I don't cover those inside my contracts. My contract specifically covers what the job is for, the services, and how much you are going to get paid. So let's jump into that quickly. Keep in mind, when you're talking about a contract, it serves as a reference for the employer to ensure that the employee meets his obligations. Me, Stanel Myers, the employer, which me being an employer is joy making a difference or a second touch. It just protects and makes sure that what we saying is going to happen is going to happen. So there's a protection from me, but it's also a protection to the employee because if I say that I'm going to pay you a certain amount and that's in that contract, that's what I'm obligated to pay. But also in the contract, if you say you're going to do specific duties, that's what I am looking for you to do. My contracts, they are specified and really straight to the point. Put, of course, the name of the company, but I put a topic, it's is titled general provision. And general provision is basically saying that the, me as the employer, joy making the difference, and the individual that we are going into a contract together. And it's, it's stating that the contract that we're going in together, what it is for when it comes to the less, for, for example, the after school program. So myself is Joy Making a Difference and the individual, let's say the individual is Peter X. So Joy Making a Difference and Peter X, we agree to operate. And what are we agreeing to operate as? So that goes in a general provision of what your agreement of what you, the employer and the employee is going to do, or you, the employer and the person that that you're contracting out and then it has the services so the services is basically the responsibilities what are the responsibilities for what i do is i jot down every responsibility that i can really think of for instance i have a contract for my site coordinator and when and, and when i say site coordinator it is basically the person that coordinates, deliver the services. They work directly with the staff, the school, the principals. They're basically in this principal for an after school program. When my services, I specifically state what are they doing inside that part. So they're going to supervise. They're going to obtain daily support. They're going to communicate. They're going to be organized. Anything they have to do when it comes to lunches, students, any issues that pertain inside this contract that I can identify to see that I need them to do is inside this contract. It's just basically every responsibility that they're going to be doing. Every single responsibility. So my contracts that I write with my school are completely different with the contracts that I write with my case management agency because you have two different companies that are offering completely different services. For my after school program, the contract is really, is super easy. You're just writing down the services, every responsibility. If someone is sweeping floors, you're going to say what area of the room they're going to sweep. They're going to sweep the kitchen, the bathroom. If you have a cleaning business, they're going to sweep the, the living room or they're going to vacuum. You're going to be very clear and very specific under 
further that service of what services they will be completing in those tasks that they're doing for you. Then the schedule. The schedule is specific. The schedule is what date, when does it end, what is the time. So you want to make sure that you have the date, the time, and the hours inside that schedule. So if the schedule is going to be, if someone, let's keep talking about cleaning. If someone, if you have a cleaning service and someone going to come and clean a home and they're going to clean that home, let's say three hours, nine to 12, you're going to be specific on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, three days a week, they will clean the home from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Schedule, again, is, is super easy and you're going to be clear and specific. Now, the financial piece, that financial piece is important as well because that is how much you are going to pay the individual. Of course, you had a conversation before and you and, and that person agreed. Now, keep in mind, the contract is after you agreed, you, you communicated through email or you communicated over the phone. Email is really good because you are able to track all your email correspondence and you, you communicated whatever verbal communication that you have. Now the financial is inside this contract. Contract with the financial is the value and that's the value of the contract. It's agreed upon both parties that has a set amount. For your cleaning service, if your set amount to pay the person that is cleaning the home for you $25 an hour, then you will put $25 per hour operating and what it is that they're doing, that they're cleaning um, the home or what specific home. Now your contracts can be tailored to however you fit. So if it's different homes that they're cleaning, if it's one home that they're cleaning, however you fit. The problem with contracts is that, and, and, and I even ran into this, is that keeping up with renewing the contract. So you want to make sure that you have somebody that renew the contracts because life happened, things happen. If it's a contract and it's a yearly contract, you want to make sure on that year that that person is still in contract and you're having a conversation with the individual and they're, again, you're, they're signing a contract. So basically, after you have your general provisions, your services, your schedule, your financial, the person is going to sign the contract. You're going to sign the contract. You're going to have a written copy. You're going to take that contract, you, however you do it. I'm old school. I physically put it in a file, but I also have it on a computer where my assistant, Jeannie, she puts it, she does all the contracts now. When I first started, I did every single contract that walked in, every contract. We're going to come up with an amount, and then she actually does the contracts because we've been doing this for six years. The contracts are in the system. They're in the computer. We can just tell her the contract, of course to the individual that we are hiring. For my case management agency, it's a little different because it has a little bit more specific areas. It does have the services, but it also have payment for services. Just talking about the payment, compensation, it's the same thing, but it's just a little bit more detail. It, it talks about if you're an independent contractor, because again, when they first came in, they were independent contractors, and now they're W-2s. My contracts are a little different. And basically, it, it just talk about the services, what services are going to get done, what they're going to do in the services, how they're going to perform the services, and what we agree for them to do the specific service. Because they are W-2, of course, taxes do come out. You can have a portion for taxes. Some some contracts have a portion for taxes. If they are contractors, you can have a portion for taxes. And it's just basically saying that you acknowledge and agree that the contract shall be responsible for all income, social security, Medicare, workers' compensation, and the withholdings are the responsibility of the employee. If they are a contractor and there's no taxes that is coming out because you just want to cover that in the event someone has an issue and say something separately from from what you discuss. And that's the point of having a contract, making sure everything is on paper. And anytime, if you forget something and something is important, I remember one time there was something that I forgot on my contract and it was actually a cert under the services and it was a duty. So I said, I have to pull your contract and make sure I write this in because so we don't have any issues or any problems. The first thing somebody will say, nobody said that to me, but I remember working and I remember people saying that's not in my contract. Just having that mentality, I know how people 
think because I know people that I work with. I know how I think. You just want to make sure that everything is covered. Anytime that you miss something, you can always pull that contract and you can always put that inside and have them resign it. And it's just the revised contract. You're not getting rid of the other contract, but you're revising the contract and you're going to keep that in their file as well as a revision. Default and termination. This is any event of the default of the by the contractor and you you as the employer can you can terminate the person you can put this in there immediately depending on the situation somebody coming and they punching somebody in the face in subordination that's where that will go in here you can't just go and terminate someone because they they had such a bad day and they didn't come in for 20 minutes and then they looked at you and rolled their eyes I mean hey you could but you want to make sure that you're clear people are quick to think that you have money or you they're quick to to try to get a lawsuit or something or you, you just don't know how people think so you want to make sure that everything is covered in your contract because you definitely want to have everything in writing and with that, you also want to make sure, now that I'm thinking about it, every business has to have some type of insurance, property insurance, any type of general liability insurance. And when I say property, if you have a physical building, so because I have a physical building, I have to have property insurance, general liability insurance. Another important insurance is called error of omissions. You may not have heard of this. But this is so important because ever of emissions is a type of insurance that it actually protects the employer, the employees, the workers. It protects everyone of some type of negligence. So say you were working with a child and you was running a group and you said something to a child and it was misinterpreted. And then the child went home, told the parent, and and the parent felt like it would have the child harm him or herself. Anything as such as that sort, that's whatever on the missions is because maybe it wasn't clear, wasn't specific. So make sure you're covered. If in any type of business that you're doing, make sure that you know the specific type of insurance that you need for that business. That is very, very, very important. You have to have insurance for your company. Any type of company, any type of company that you have, if you have a t-shirt company, you should have insurance because someone could say they wore your t-shirts and they got a rash. And now that they have this rash, it, I mean, anything, it, it listen, it happens. You should be covered and have some type of insurance. So you definitely want to look into that and you definitely want to check with a lawyer when it comes to insurance. I want to talk about if you have any type of injuries, um, what would be inside that contract when it comes to injuries, what would be in the contract if you offer any type of insurance or medical insurance, you want to make sure that that is in your contract as well. Again, the pay rate and specifically what it is the individual is doing, how many days a week that they're coming in, you want to specify is so important that payment schedule. You can talk about raises, uh, when they when they will have a raise, or how often do you talk about a raise when that will come up. Anything that you want to put in there, you really want to think about it. You really want to research. You want to think about it. Make sure you have them sign, sign, sign. It's so important, and try to keep up with your contracts because I know that was something that we struggle with keeping up with the contracts just make sure that you are protecting yourself as the employer that you are recording the tasks expected of the employee very very important all right y'all i hope that this helps some of you because this is not a topic that you hear so much about it should be discussed everybody y'all out there y'all hustling y'all starting your business make sure that you are covered make sure that you are protected and also make sure you have that insurance so important there are many agencies or many businesses that fell because they were sued and if you don't have the type of entity that's a different discussion if you don't have the type of entity that's another problem because the type of entity you have goes with the type of insurance that you will need for your business that you provide all right y'all y'all know what to do no more excuses wake up up. Thank you for listening to No More Excuses, Wake Up. If you love the show, please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes or Spotify. 
To learn more about me and my different agencies and what I do, go to StanelleMyersEnterprises.com. While you're there, check out Money Therapy Institute and watch my video where you will see me doing a little acting, showing you how I fought and kicked down closed doors. You can also click on Stanella Money Therapist and get my free budget spreadsheet. And of course, you can email me at contact at StanellaMoneyTherapist.com. I'm also on social media on Facebook at Stanella Money Therapist and Instagram at Stanell the Money Therapist. No more excuses. Y'all know what y'all need to do. Wake up.